Okay, thank you for coming to my lecture. And just I want to know how much percentage of you understand English? Could you raise your hand? That's a good number. So, okay. Um, I try to make jokes. Oh, I guess you can make more. Don't worry. You want to make you want to make more. <laughs> so, um, so uh, well, I'm going to make some jokes. So if you find the uh, joke is interesting, try to laugh it. <laughs> Don't stay <around. laughs> You know, sometimes I have a problem with uh, modest person, and uh, in in London it works all the time because the easy person is the same, the same, so laugh so easily. Anyway, <coughs> so it's really honored to be uh, in Moscow. Actually, one of my relatives uh, used to study in Moscow, and she was invited to uh, study in the Academy in Moscow. And uh, she won many prizes here, and she became professional pianist in Japan. And now, in, I know that you know, there are many pianists in Moscow. But I know that also it's very difficult to be famous in Moscow. <laughs> but in Japan it's easy. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should wait until to sit down. While I'm waiting for them, you know, okay, I think I do some appeal for my book. <laughs> this is about my uh, lecture in Harvard University. And then they made a kind of ordeal. It's home from an idea. I'm saying this time for some books free. So if somebody makes good question, I will give this book to you. Free of charge. Right. Most few people coming in. Most of them, most of them. Okay, still. Okay. I make little talk. As you can see, I'm always in blue. And my soul is blue. My watch is blue. My eyeball is blue. So people think um, I'm wearing the same t-shirt all the time. But it's not true. I have more than 100 of this. So I'm green. And um, my wife is always red. Since we got married between red and blue, we decided that everything we share in yellow. So we decided to make our daughter yellow. <laughs> then we got our son. We were supposed to make our son into yellow as well, but she didn't like to lose her color, so she made him into green. So we got four colors. Like <laughs> And always we start our lecture from our family. Because my lecture is not about you know latest fashion. Always we get idea from our family. I get the idea from daily life. And then there is one thing I'm very much proud of my office. My office got only 26 people, but last nine years we got seven marriages. So if you want to find a mate, you should come to my office. <laughs> and always I say in my office, if you don't know the happiness, how can you provide happiness to guests? Because our job is to provide happiness to the others. And I start my lecture from the smallest project we have ever done. It is called Roof House. And uh, after World War II, Japanese 
used to live in this kind of house. And whenever I, uh, I go to see new client, always I ask them, what kind of liquor do you spend?
and they said, oh, we want to have a lunch on top of the roof. So we should put table and benches. And then the wife said, excuse me, my, my mother is living about 80 meters down this way. And uh, she opened the window every morning. So I want to make sure if she's alive in the morning, <laughs> and they said, okay, uh, rooftop is cold in the winter, so we have to put the stove. And they said, okay, summer is hot, so we want to shower, so we have to put shower behind the screen. So many things started out. That's very simple section. <coughs> So then uh, we got this house. And then this house was published throughout the world. And then the editor of Artist Review said this is the most well published house uh, last 10 years. Actually, we counted the magazines up to 400, but still going on. And now this house in uh, school is my, this, this project in school is Japan. So every children in Japan know about this house. <laughs> but this house was built almost 20 years ago. So so it means some of them became architects, and then they wanted to say. And then they go to government and they say, we want to get a building permit. But always, government official said, no, you can't do it because you have no handrail. <laughs> okay, when we designed this, we, we designed the handrail. But the owner said, no, no, I don't want the contract. Because if you look at this, no house has handrail. No house has handrail on it. So why do we have to have it? The funny thing is that the, the owner also works for government. <coughs> now the younger generation wants the same. And always they bring fiction. Do you know this house? It's, it's cool. We want to be safe. And always government officials said, I know this house too. That was the reason why you can't do it anymore. <laughs> so this is original. <laughs> Nobody can do it anymore. But the point is that you now, you now this house is good for neighbor. <coughs> and neighbor loves this people deck so they can go to have a beer on top. And so owner is quite happy. That's the basic of building home. And uh, when uh, we designed this house, uh, they started using the roof and they ordered it from rooftop. And then it's a hat guy came down here and they asked, oh, who ordered pizza? And then we called from above, okay, come up here. And then we need ladder here. And then when he came back, what he said was, where do I take my shoes? The first question. And then now the owner really likes that situation. So uh, they came to it again and again. But 
they always have same, uh, or, 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 or they already have different person to them with the meter. So they are really worried, actually the owner was really worried what happened to the boy who used to deliver the pizza all the time. And then everybody was said, oh, he's okay. Just we are making switches so everybody can see this house. <laughs> so this house became the most famous house in Pizza Happy Japan. <laughs> For the first time, our uh, Pizza Magazine called Japan Architects, they published human being in the book. Because usually, Japanese architecture magazines are very serious. They don't put people, just like um, you know, the dogs, oil monkeys. We don't say people. But editor put uh, this picture. And then on the next issue, always there's a being critic. And the critic said, you know, rooftop is very hot in summer. Cold in winter. So I don't think it is This must be fiction. And for the first time in the history of the magazine, first time in 90 years, the owner wrote back to the magazine. We use Rooftop every day. The statement was simple. You know, rooftop is very hot in summer. So you should rooftop, use rooftop in early in the morning. In the winter, rooftop is very cold. You should use rooftop after lunch time. It's warm enough. You know, uh, we used to be able to find a good temperature. Find a good temperature. But now just we are trying we are trying to change the temperature. That's the reason why we have a problem. We could be we should be able to find good temperature for us. That that's quite a strong statement say. This is the worst kitchen you can think of. <laughs> Because we didn't have money, and this is the present for the carpet. <coughs> I'm, I'm telling you, this is the cheapest project we have ever done. A shower? <laughs> and so we were not sure if they are going to use it. And one day, we got a call from Mrs. Takahashi <coughs> to my wife. Mrs. Takahashi said, it was so nice to take a hot shower in cold typhoon. So my wife told Mrs. Takahashi, you have to be careful. And Mrs. Takahashi said, oh, don't worry, I'm wearing t-shirts. I don't think she understood what we are concerned about. <laughs> But at least we know they are using it. There are many uh, runners who go up and down. And the kids love to do that. You know the game of people you can get hammer with head like this? Just like that. And then when you have a couple of edge, you see legs. <laughs> so, the owner of this kindergarten called us, I want roof house too, but I want the roof house for 600 children. And I went there, I found the building is awful, <laughs> but we liked as atmosphere. And the point is that mostly external. 
In Japan, nowadays, everything is car air conditioned. But in this case, I've got it, people are working around the outside. So I told the owner, you should keep it as it is. He didn't go upset. So now uh, he started to convince me as we did build a, a, a new kindergarten. He was taking me around to show the leaking point of the building. So we have to do something.
time frame is nothing to do with him. It's just a symbol. You get more, more, and more. Actually, this boy, that's a tree. He's eating the tree. Oda kept saying, you know, I want just to the end of the edge. I said, it's impossible. <laughs> and I told him, it's not going to be so bad. Monkey did too. <laughs> Feeding time. <laughs> We were not following our, our living standard for kindergarten. Because we found out there are so many rules which is nothing to do with function of kindergarten. For example, seeing the our government used to say seeing has to seeing height must be more than three meters. That's meaning that we want seeing height for kindergarten. And also, uh, our building code was saying, OK, you have to have a distinct wall between classrooms. But I want to say, you know, you know, I don't see the kids on the roof. And if the ceiling is too high, you don't see the kids. So maybe lower. So we made it 2.1. And then what he called us said, you know, we are in Montessori education. In Montessori, we mix classes. So we lays one year old, uh, three years old, who is six years old. We mix these together. So we don't want to have any more. So Ministry of Education said, you know, if you don't follow my rule, I can't give you the money. <laughs> Ona said, no problem. I pay the money. That's it. <laughs> but always we kept getting a problem with the government. We always we get complaints. Then one day situation changed. 2011, our suddenly Ministry of Education called us something wonderful happened. OECD in Paris, and also UNESCO, and also United Nations, they tried to find the best school in the world. In the world. And then there are 166 submissions from each government, total, you know, from all these governments. Then the officer said, this school was selected as the best school in the world. <laughs> in a Japanese government, I've never listened to Japanese. <laughs> Japanese government, government never listened to Asian. But the Japanese government listened to American and European. So uh, when I went to Paris, we realized now uh, our six delegates came along with us. I don't think they did something for us, <laughs> but they did supplies with us. And when we went back to Tokyo, we found out uh, we are appointed to be the one to set up new standard for the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Now we are the government, we can do whatever we want. So it's good. And also, you know, he, he, the minister himself says, you know, now I can give you the surprise. We, we got the surprise too. And the owner got the surprise. Everything changed. Oh no, it's not charging, sorry. I think there's something wrong with this. Is this connected? Oh, so now it's okay. Oh. And this is the one to cut the leaves from the roof. 
because uh, there are lots of trees on top, so ribs can down. And we use a uh, fertilizer. They use that thing that I have actually to for class. And at this point, you know, <laughs> so, okay, we just can tell you. This is normal water dust. This is uh, you know, the one to spray the water. Then the shower, he's not, he's not washing his boots. He's <laughs> Now this is very important slide. You know, this building, in this building, no autistic child shows symptoms. Uh, in autism, in autism, you know, they don't show any symptoms. And uh, you know, some scientists, the professor found that there are two facts. First of all, these kids can find their own business. Because you, usually the kids with autism need to have more resistance. So they get scared by people, by people. But the point they have proper distance, they are okay. And in this kid, if he doesn't like his classroom, Ona said, you let him go. But don't worry, he said, he will come back eventually to be sad. <laughs> and second, I need to talk about the background noise. This is a kitchen house in Indonesia. Indonesia, they do this ritual. At the point I recorded this, we were not listening to this beep. The beep is from jungle. But when I came back to Tokyo, I found out beep is in this iPhone. I thought that is kind of rich of this iPhone, but as scientists said, no, 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 it was, noise was always there. But in the jungle, you have amazing noise cancer system to ignore the background noise from jungle. Because your body knows you are in jungle. And those scientists explained to me, you know that your body is doing exactly the same. Because you are breathing and those so pains, it means that basically cardiovascular system is creating huge noise. And uh, still you can listen to Mozart, you can listen to Chopin, whatever the title is. Because you have those cancer systems. But when you disconnect yourself from soundings, your voice cancer system stops working. If once you dive at the water, you feel that your body is disconnected. You hear the noise. And the water, if you get lots of noise. The people think that is the noise is from the water. No, no, that noise is from your body. And that is how your body works. You know, if you are if you are a mother or father, you know that your baby sleeps better in noisy restaurant in the arms of the parents. Okay? And then when you put them in the quiet bed, they start to cry. Because they need noise. They need to be a part of the environment. So what we are saying is that maybe the modern architecture is a cause of a lot of our own autism. When you disconnect these kids from the surrounding environment, they start showing any symptoms. But when they are in their environment, <coughs> And also I'm telling you one more thing. Because so it's open in summer, of course it's cold in winter, it, it's closed in the winter, but most of the time, two thirds of each year, it's open from February to November. And then there's a German uh, pedagogical scientist saying, oh, 
things may get wet. What would you do if they get wet? It's many days, friends that come wet. The owner said, in Japan, how you take it wet, they change. <laughs> and then the said, well, still they get wet. The owner says, well, in Japan, usually it keeps the waterproof. You can wash them clean. <laughs> it's quite simple step. But you should know that this is not the primitive architecture. At the east, we have a quite advanced heating system using our air chamber organs. And also, acoustic condition in our sound environment is uh, simulated in a 3D computer. So we know what kind of sound is going on. And the structure is quite advanced so that we can stop the old vibrations. Now I want to talk about nostalgic future. Nostalgic future. You know, this used to be the vision of future in the 1980s. About uh, almost 40 years ago. Future was like this. This was the future they were dreaming for. But it didn't happen. In the movie called Matrix. You know, uh, the computer uh, is not this way anymore. Uh, this, the computer is called Matrix. But you should know that we have similar kind. It's called iCloud. And in our case, use iPhone and iPad to make the water class, to communicate. But it doesn't mean we are going into this. They go skiing, they do uh, 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 they do diving, they climb mountains. Because of this, we can go to either Jungle or O'Neill Island. And they said they can do whatever we want to experience our life. We call it uh, we call that uh, nostalgic future. So there's some people saying, oh, in the future we have to have a big screen, we have to have like, a computer installed everywhere. But it's not true. Now computer is your pocket. You don't see it. So in our last century, we are saying, okay, the future is a computer. Now the future belongs to us. It doesn't necessarily, a future doesn't necessarily be looking like the one designed by computer. Right? This is how they divide classrooms. But they don't help teacher. <laughs> they don't work. They don't work. Christmas time, uh, one, one monkey, a monkey to fish another monkey. Uh, each classroom has one skylight. This is where Santa Claus comes down. And we had a problem because we designed this uh, this skylight for Japanese Santa Claus. And the owner called American Santa Claus from America based on fire. He was stuck in the frame. I think that is a problem for your Russian too. <laughs> and also we use incandescent light like this. People think so LED is the future, but we have to be careful because LED uh, harm the back screen of the eyes of the kids. So uh, uh, this time is fact, but I don't have time to talk about this petition here, you know, you know, LED 
kids back screen of the kids. Now, this is the movement of the boy between 10 past 9 to 30 past 9. He made this much within 20 minutes. And he made 6,000 days before lunchtime. But the surprise is not yet to come. Average is 4,000 days. And actually, still, our, our other professor found out average in Japan is 800 meters a day, but here 4,000 meters is five times more. So everybody asks, you know, how how come you make that kids to be so strong? How do you train them? The owner said it's quite simple. We leave them alone like a sheep. Just we open the gate. They start running. So nobody is chasing them. You see, nobody is chasing them. The folks are spot this guy. And when they are the ready, they try things. Just like this in the morning. You don't need to chase them. You know, we are saying when they are ready to run, they start running. And when they are ready to climb a tree, they start climbing a tree. Does it fuck you my being Now we are trying to present for mathematics and also literature and also language. And we are now working on our kinds of elements. And the teacher, it's called spontaneous language. Now that is not yet to come. But I show you shows that we try how happy they are. There are more than 20 windows on the roof. The children love to jump into the net. There are three trees. Sometimes we get more than 120 children around the tree. It's amazing. <coughs> and because we are the roof in now, so we don't need to worry about ceiling height. So we decided to put uh, as five floors within five minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, actually, six. sorry, seven floors within five minutes. Very low ceiling. Actually, this is English language classroom. So why we design something like this, we have to be careful. So we put our kids. And uh, he's quite resilient, so we don't need to worry about his head. And he hit his head over there, and then we put markings. <laughs> so he's the one to report to me where is the dangerous. <laughs> this is a picture from a long time ago, so they are small kids. Now just my daughter is four of them, my wife. Then we put other kids. Traffic is off in Tokyo. <laughs> and these days we protect kids. Because we protect kids too much, they don't know how to jump off, they don't know how to get injury. But if they don't get that kind of lesson, they get serious, serious injury when they are grown up. So always the uh, owner says, you know, we need to provide small dosage of danger, control danger. And also they learn how to help each other. Like this, you know? There is no puncture uh, inside the classroom. My daughter is happy. And then we were told to design a small room for very small kids. And a mirror is kind of simple to protect the kids in Japan. So when I said, I want some kind of mirror for the kids, they said, okay, no problem. We bought a mirror and we did project like this, quite simple. And actually this is the owner, he's looking so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then why being the mirror a little bit? I was built, you know, looks cute. 
And also this side is good for Lola. This side is for the kids. It's very simple project. And there's some people say, well, oh, it's dangerous to have a color on the middle of the classroom. But I don't think so. Can I show you what they do? <laughs> and some people say, well, what have how about the colors? And also there's a, there's a kind of height difference on the edge. And the government, local government said, well, it's illegal. We have to make it very quick. But the owner said, well, this is very, very important for the It's a seating place. And this is the only case experiment. It's amazing how short their legs are. Only 10 centimeters. It's okay. This is how they sleep. Now just tell me you're doing something weird. <laughs> Lots of umbrellas. <laughs> Kids run around. And uh, mostly outside, but inside is quite well protested. So the people say, I think you must be a very uh, hot all the time. That is why it works. Of course, it's warmer than Moscow, but uh, this is close to Fuji Mountain. The temperature goes down to minus five or six sometimes, sometimes minus ten, but they are okay. <coughs> but this is under uh, construction. Okay, I'm going to show you something more serious now. It's great. You know what happened to Japan? 2011, big tsunami came. People think these trees are small, but it's not true. That these trees are about 40 meters tall. And the dispute is quite big. There's a lady holding the microphone to them. The lady, you have to leave the town, you have to leave the town. And she was holding micro microphone to the desk. She died in the water. And she became a song. There's a funny thing about this uh, tsunami because they had two hours after the aspect before the tsunami comes. And the old broadcast said, you have to leave the town, you have to leave the town. But yet, uh, 15,000 people get killed in this uh, uh, in the tsunami because they didn't believe it. But there's a famous monk saving so much life. He said, you have to come to my temple. There used to be a problem like this. All these trees are 400 years old. Because 1611, exactly 400 years ago, big tsunami came. Tsunami comes like a book. The old artist, the monk, knew about it. But he said, you have to come to my temple. And all these, uh, you find all temp is the same place at all. Because only uh, all temple exists on the high ground where it's not cannot reach. If that uh, temple is lower ground, washed away. So you have to find a temple more than one that gets old. This is how much major better. This blue is not me. It's not reached this much. It's about uh, a few kilometers away from the coastline and 25 meters from sea level. So uh, I said, okay, what can we do for this? Actually, these problems, all the trees are dead because of seawater. You know, tsunami is not uh, the way, just the sea staying more than half dead. And uh, if UNICEF came, they wanted me to uh, help designing a temporary structure for the kidnapping, that washed away its land. But I said, doing temporary structure is not good. You know, we should do something for permanence. 
and you got money from UNICEF. Said, okay, we should do things for permanence. We can use these uh, trees for the permanence. So we chop the trees. This. Well, but it's not easy to use these kind of trees because it's so wet. And also, you can find a wood make a nest like this. It's uh, quite wet, like a watermelon, such very heavy. But we, we managed to make uh, big farms out of this, 600 by 600. And we decided to use uh, traditional joinery because we know that the traditional joinery sustainability more than thousand years. In Japan, uh, there are so many uh, buildings surrounding more than 1,000 years, all timbers. So this build timber building is about 1,300 years old, but still exactly the same as 1,300 years ago. So we used the old technique. We did some tests. Now this building was rebuilt so quickly because locals are so this is very important. You know, this is uh, you know um, this is the life they used to have in, in the town. These trees used to be the symbol. And these people are crying from this I feel that's it from the one side. None of them have half all of them lost house. But still they helped us to design and a new house to they helped us to build this uh, kindergarten. It's not a model temple. It's looking like, so it's looking like a temple. The kids are back. Then now just they start doing wrong things. <laughs> actually, this, uh, actually, the weather is a bit similar to Moscow. Maybe it's a little bit warmer. It's our winter is minus 20. Summer is 40. Like that. And always they do wrong things, they are standing outside the Andra, standing outside, they spend time under the floor. But um, that is what kids are. And uh, actually this is a monk, looking like a kid. Now this building is not just a building, it's a message for 400 in the future. Telling if tsunami comes, you have to come to me. You have to life to be safe. Actually this is where tsunami stops. So if our children come to this uh, building, their life will be safe. This is a message for the future. Now we're planting new trees. Yeah. Then more kids started coming back. So we had to extend it more. But we, didn't have, we don't have big tree anymore. So we had to combine small trees. But now you can see how kids are happy. Fish. <coughs> And then we have a copper covering here because snow piles up to 1.5 meters. This is what kids are. And then we have a big long staircase like this. No, we don't care about area free. <laughs> of course. But because this is mountain area, you know, you know, you know they get used to climbing mountains and climbing clouds. They love <laughs> this kind of small space. Okay, I'm going to show you some of uh, our uh, building in the extreme climate. And uh, this is a museum we designed about uh, you know, 13 years ago. 13 years ago. No, not 13 years ago. Sorry, 15 years ago. Sorry, 15 years ago. And this area is known as the heaviest snow in the world. Snowfall is still about 30 meters each year, 3 zero meter. In Russia, Siberia export such a amount of snow from your country. Huh? You export it snow. <laughs> it's coming from Siberia. And uh, this is about 160 meter long, old in steel building, just like designed like a submarine. In summer, looking like this. And we have a big window. It's a 
kinds of laboratory. It's not just like museum, just not only just a museum. There are scientists staying here throughout the year. In the winter, five minutes, ten minutes in the day, because it's a negative 1.5 meters snow in the day. In a week, this is only six minutes. There's a crevice, and if you're cold in crevice, you have to wait until they to come out. You see section of snow. And then when our uh, snow team was last time, curator said, oh, are you sure this is okay? I said, no, we can get everything. Don't worry about it. Actually, it's 14 meter wide, almost 4 meters tall, single piece of window, made of special plastic glass. Please, it's got next glass, acrylic, no? And if you use this uh, for acrylic, but it's very special one, because we have to stand against the ultraviolet. So it's a very expensive window. And then called me again, are you sure? <laughs> I said, I asked my uh, uh, structure here, and he said, it's okay. So I said, it's okay. They called me again, scarier. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now we know that the snow is not just snow. There's so much light going on underneath the snow. Now, now there are so many scientists out there to see what's going on underneath the snow. And this is so close to this Really, we've got another project very close by. This is the amount of snow we get. All these snow are coming from you guys. <laughs> we don't want any more snow. See, and actually this is a uh, picture from 30 years ago. In 30 years ago, they didn't know how to remove the snow, so it was looking like this. So they used to make tunnels underneath <coughs> here. They used to have a window like this, and they used to make tunnels to go to the other side. Now we clean all the snows, but I said, well, we keep that kind of culture. So we designed this building like this, building like this. but it's not easy uh, construction site. It snows a lot. He, she is a project architect. She's having time, having problem to get to the site. <coughs> That's how she gets the site. You know, this amount of snow piled up is just only three days. So you can climb up to the top. But in summer, it changes like this. Snow is completely gone. My point is, you know, why you design something for extreme environment? It's very important to design things for good weather too. Actually in Moscow, weather is so nice. It's nice to stay outside. And uh, just uh, this morning, I, I was talking to the Minister of, Minister of Education in Moscow. And so, you know, I was telling them, you know, you should make school building like a cafe in front of the hotel, right next to the Red Square. Because usually school buildings are designed to protect the kids. But in good ways, they should be able to get out. You know, if you go to a uh, hotel, a uh, nice hotel, and then you find there a nice cafe sticking out, you know, that's a good night, nice and good environment for kids. So architecture should transform. So we designed a hatch like this. We open it. And because market. <laughs> so it's very important to transform. Like this. Okay, now it's getting some time, so just I show some slides. We design chairs like this with uh, lots of papers. We don't have much time. He's Peter Cook, you know him? <laughs> Peter, Peter Cook from Akira. Oh, you know, they are the project actors. Now always there are couples doing project activities in practice. And I told them, if they don't finish this, 
a project on time, to say they want the, any new wedding. So they finished out the project on time. I started playing piano, but I don't play my piano in front of Brazil. Too dangerous. <laughs> but I like piano. You can not listen to my piano in Japan. I did the design a chair like this. Oh, this is interesting, you know? Um, this is a tool for baptism. But, but the, um, the you know, pastor, or whatever you know, pastor said, you know, we want this uh, uh, tool to be as low as possible. Because the uh, pool was, uh, water was supposed to be low because we were Jordan in low ground. The point is going down roads. That is part of the So we make it look like uh, the pond in the floor. And the people think it's a kind of black stone. Then uh, the pastor or our father or whatever said, you know, he said, well, it's nice view. Because we, even I don't tell anything, that people get baptized. <laughs> So now I just have to show you another one with the uh, building. If you're coming to Japan, you should come to see this. We are using joineries. My point is that the kids find the way around. It's very important to provide, provide freedom. You know, this building doesn't make any room. They find a uh, way around. As I always tired. <laughs> My son, he's cute. <laughs> but not like this anymore. It's always changed. Now, I'm saying, how do we raise a child? As I said, they are waterproof. And they were supposed to be stronger. In these days, people are saying, we have to protect the kids. Of course, we, we have to keep peace, war is very bad, you know, you know, we have to keep them in peaceful existence. But it doesn't mean we have to put them in the box all the time. I think our kids to high mountain, it's about 3,000 meters. Take crown trees. And also, they know how to get and so, well, these days, parents are really worried about bacteria. Some parents say, oh, don't touch the seawater. It's dirty, there's so much bacteria. But always, always I tell my son, get your lunch. <laughs> you got lunch? <laughs> Eat it. Of course, roasted. <laughs> this is how I used to train my son. He was just turning to two years old. 24 months. And when he was 24 months, he could swim like this. He's breathing the water. Now, this is how he's looking like. He can dive up to centimeters. So uh, my point is, that is what human beings are. We designed it like this. And then I just show this car. <laughs> still we design, we, we, still we drive this kind of car. And uh, it's not the air conditioned. But you can open the roof. But the point is really, we have to close it. But the instruction is saying, Okay, there is a small door underneath of the window. I can open it. But if you forget to close the door before you got on, get on to the expressway, all the water on the bonnet goes into the cabin and keep pumping on the floor. Plus, instruction is saying, 
did a track on the floor, you can pull out, you can let the wound out. The owner of the roof, Mr. Takahashi, said, you know, you can't get perfection. You can't get 100% satisfaction from this guy. But you could love this artificial 200%. Just like your kids. Your kids are not perfect. But you love your kids. So that's the reason why you keep it. This car was in production for 15 years. Because people love it. So I'm saying is the uh, sustainability of architecture is not just about durability. Even strong building, you won't destroy it if you don't like it. And also, you know, even uh, the building that's not very fortunate, people try to keep it. If it's nice. So, you can put many people You can put lots of things in. You can put family. Thank you very much.